Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through accounting for cost of goods sold and relatedly ending inventory in a periodic inventory system. In a periodic system, um, when you get to the end of an accounting period, you will not automatically know what the ending balance in your inventory is. The reason you don't know that is because in a periodic system, you are not updating your inventory balance with every sale made. You're not tracking your cost of goods sold with every sale made. So what happens in a periodic system in order to get the inventory balance up to date is a physical inventory count is performed. People go out to the warehouses, the sales floors, the trucks, you count everything that's there, you input it into the system, the system matches up what you counted with what its value is, what it's worth, and the system will determine what is the dollar value of that ending balance that you physically counted as part of your physical inventory count. From there, you compare that ending balance from the count to whatever you had available for sale. So cost of goods available for sale is the combination of your beginning inventory balance plus anything else you've purchased. Now your beginning inventory balance in a periodic system came from last period's count because you've counted every single period. So last period you counted, that was the ending balance for that period. And now this period you're counting, that's the ending balance for this period. You add whatever purchases you have to get your cost of goods available for sale and the assumption is made that any difference between what you had available for sale and what your ending balance now is was a cost of goods sold. In other words, that good is no longer there because you sold it to a customer. At that point in time, you have to record a journal entry for that cost of goods sold because remember, you count it to figure out what this balance is, but you still need to get that balance into the accounting system. All the accounting system knows is, what do we have available? And so you record the journal entry that you see on the left over here. Whatever the last day of the period is, you debit cost of goods sold, you credit inventory, that puts this into your inventory ledger, and the netting of these two will then make your inventory balance per the accounting ledger match what you physically counted it to be, okay? This journal entry right here, if you're familiar with a perpetual inventory system, should look familiar. Every time you make a sale in a perpetual inventory system, you actually record this for the amount of that one sale. And of course, because you do that, by the time you get to the end of the period in a perpetual system, you already know your ending balance. In a periodic system, you actually have to figure out what COGS is based on the math I just discussed. Now, one thing you might also be thinking is, well, wait a minute, that's a pretty broad assumption to say that the difference between what you had available for sale and your ending balance must have sold. What if it got damaged? What if it got stolen? Sure, any of those things could have happened, but that's still all considered simply a cost of selling the good. You're gonna have breakage, you're gonna have theft, but all of that is just part of the cost of you doing business in this merchandise, and therefore it is still appropriate to simply record that as cost of goods sold, even though technically some portion of it may not have literally sold to a customer. Now let's just compare real quick side by side. I already kind of talked about this, but just to give you a, a sense of what these ledgers look like next to each other. In a perpetual system, notice you have a beginning balance. Then you have the cost of goods purchased, which combines your actual purchases any freight you pay for those purchases, netted against any returns or discounts for those purchases. We call that cost of good purchased. Combined, this makes cost of goods available for sale. Because you're tracking COGS and returns and anything of that nature as you go, you automatically have an ending balance. In a periodic system, you have your beginning balance based on last period's inventory count. You add in that cost of goods um, sorry, the cost of goods purchased. So all of these things that get logged in a perpetual system, you're going to add that in as an adjusting entry in your periodic system, your, what we call the net purchases of the company. Combine that still makes the cost of goods available for sale. Take the difference between cost of goods available for sale and ending balance. That will lead you to your COGS and the COGS you come up with in a periodic system should equal the net cogs that you have in a perpetual system. 
and as a result your ending balances should also, in theory, be the same. All right, that's it for cost of goods sold, as well as ending inventory balances in a periodic inventory system. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.